All right, it is the very first Nasty Metal Podcast episode for the new year of 2021, and this is episode number 12 of the Nasty Metal Podcast. Oh boy, we got plenty of topics to, to talk about on this one. Uh, of course, uh, we have a Q&A. We have a Q&A segment for this one, and uh, so I'll be answering at least a question that was sent to me from, of course... Storm Rider of uh, again uh, one of my top subscribers uh, definitely uh, was uh, definitely sent me a question or at least a few questions that I'm definitely going to be answering but that's a little later in this podcast but for now uh, let's definitely at least celebrate the new year of course uh, we're gonna have a little downside uh, I mean uh, when I say downside we're gonna be no oh boy we're gonna get against some downer talk. Uh, and it was definitely something that was definitely uh, at, le- at least kicked off a bit of the year. Because, you know, we're always t- talking about how how we're hoping that 2021 is going to be the year that we bounce back after the the horribleness that was 2020 with all the whole COVID-19 and, the, the again, just the whole pandemic. We're hoping that everything turns around. I mean, yes. We got ourselves a new president. We got old, you know, we got new things for, for this year. But... Once again, there's always something that's going to hinder things and just sour all of of the excitement. And boy, and uh, boy, do we do we have to, uh, uh, something to talk about? Oh boy, who you might be guessing what what it could be, but it is very metal related, and it does have to relate to the sourness that happened on the sixth, and it's. Not that I really want to talk about that kind of stuff on uh, on any of my channel here, but goddamn, if it was for, for said musician, I wouldn't be talking about it to begin with, and I wouldn't be discussing about it or giving my opinions, my thoughts on it. But I have to, and or at least I feel like I have to. But goddamn. But before I really get into that. Let's definitely go through at least the content scheduling, and I'm gonna get uh, get through at least a few weeks here. Uh, normally, when I would do the uh, uh, at least the announcement of uh, what's to come here within the next couple of weeks on this channel, like again, what's the content scheduling, what you're going to expect. Normally, I always will at least announce two weeks for at least content. Here, I'm gonna go by at least within. At least, what, four, three weeks here. So we'll see, because I've got plenty of content here. You know, sometimes there's always going to be spur-of-the-moment videos, but I'm not going to be mentioning what's going to be uh, spur-of-the-moment videos because of it actually uh, sours the idea of what a spur-of-the-moment uh, is. It's, again, it's something you don't exp- you don't plan on recording, but, again, uh, it ends up coming a video because, again, uh, you always have that excitement. Again, I'm not going to be talking about, uh, you know, stuff again. Like, collection update videos are usually something that I almost consider to be spur-of-the-moment kind of videos. So, I'm not going to be announcing that kind of stuff again. Uh, it ruins the idea of what spur-of-the-moment is. But, I am still, but uh, that doesn't mean that I'm uh, not going to talk about anything uh, when it comes to content scheduling. So, let's get to that. What do I have scheduled for next week? So, uh, on Monday which uh, will be at Monday, February 1st. It will be a Album of the Week. It is Album of the Week episode number 96. And the album that I'm spotlighting, since I kind of uh, hinted at, uh, I, I kind of, uh, uh, I wouldn't say hinted, but I kind of did try to hint at it. But in my uh, Album of the Week episode for uh, Rock Until You Drop from Raven, I did hint at the end that I was going to be spotlighting another uh, mammoth New Wave or British Heavy Metal album from, from a band who definitely were, again, one of the hugest bands to come out of the New Wave or British Heavy Metal movement. But uh, the fact is I ended up uh, uh, saying February 6th instead of February 2nd for at least the, uh, the give you the hint on when this album was released in 1981. That uh, I was supposed to say February 6th, but I said February sec- uh, 6th, uh, but not 2nd. Uh, I'm trying. I know there's a little bit of jumbling here, but uh, my bad. So I apologize for that. But uh, without further ado, I'll announce it here. It is, of course, uh, Killers from Iron Maiden. 
That's, again, the second album, and also in many ways, it was the final studio album with Paul Diano on vocals. But, again, uh, it is reaching its uh, 40th anniversary, and since on that uh, album of the week, on that Monday, uh, the, the the following day will, of course, would be its anniversary. So that's why I feel it's a great uh, a great day to choose to spotlight Killers from Iron Maiden again on Monday, February first. Again, close to its anniversary day. So that uh, it's it's perfect. It's perfect. So that's Monday. That's uh, that's for Monday, February first. On Feb on uh, Wednesday, February third, I will be. It will be another. Uh, Album review. It will be, of course, of the reviews number 198. Uh, again, it will be uh, for one of the uh, releases there, at least cassette releases that Paul of Doomsday's Today Records sent me in uh, that last package. But it's for uh, the only album from Porno Helmet, which is uh, uh, titled Bang Lord and was released in 2019. It's kind of it's more of an experimental sounding release, but again. It was sent to me. He wants to see me review it. So that's going to be on Wednesday, uh, February 3rd. And on Friday, the 5th, on Friday, February 5th, I will be reviewing the newest album from Except. That's Too Mean to Die, uh, which would be the, uh, the first album, uh, with, with just Wolf Hoffman as the sole original member left. So. Uh, that's going to be all interesting. Again, that is uh, the long-awaited follow-up to 2017's The Rise of Chaos. But I will be reviewing Too Mean to Die. So, again, uh, very cool. Um, I was, of course, by the time I was recording this, I was supposed to receive it today. But um, I guess, again, uh, due to winter storms, it delayed the um, the package to be uh, uh, to at least to arrive. So I'm guess I'm uh, so by the day that you're hearing this, I probably would be at least uh, receiving it, so I can listen to it and then review it. So uh, that's uh, will be again for uh, Friday, the February fifth. Then on uh, Monday, uh, February eighth, it will be another album of the week episode. It will be uh, episode number ninety seven. And this was the album uh, that uh, was released on uh, February 6th. It was, of course, uh, the third full-length album for Riot. It's Fire Down Under, and it was also another uh, final album for, for a member. That'd be Guy Speranza, who, of course, uh, would leave the band after this album. But that will be, of course, uh, this album spotlight for uh, Monday's album of the week in number 97. So... Fire Down Under. And then for uh, Wednesday, the February 10th, it will be another, um, again, another review, uh, though not an album review, but it, it will be a more like a, a various artist a review. And again, it was released uh, on, uh, um, I can't remember who, I think it was between Eternal Darkness, I believe, between Eternal Darkness creations and, uh, uh, you know what, uh, let me go grab it real quick. Uh, shit. Uh, let's see what we what released that. Yes, it was for Eternal Darkness Creations and Doomsays Today Records, and it'll be one of the the last uh, Doomsays Today Records reviews I'll be doing until he sends me another package full of stuff for me to review. But it is for Underground Gorilla again. It's a, a various artist compilation in partnership between. Doomsday's Today Records and uh, Eternal Darkness Creations. So uh, that will be the review for Wednesday, February 10th. And then uh, for Friday the 12th, uh, again, February 12th, it will be a uh, album, uh, another, again, another review. It will be episode uh, 201. It is for the debut full length album from technical death metal band Devil's Reef. And the album in question is Chosen by the Sea. Again, it's a newer release, so uh, that will be uh, uh, Friday, February 12th uh, review. And then uh, for a Monday, on that day, uh, for uh, again, for um, Monday, uh, another album, album of the week, which will be episode number 98. It is Point of Entry from Judas Priest. Yes, I will be finally touching upon that album. That will be, of course... Uh, 
again on Monday. So that'll again another Am of the Week episode. And so uh, the review uh, uh, for Wednesday, this for February seventeenth, I will be reviewing the debut album from uh, I believe another Swedish metal band. It is Viral. Their uh, self-titled debut album. And again, it will be the reviews uh, episode number 202. So that will be out on uh, again for Wednesday. Now, uh, for uh, Friday, February 19th, which will be one of the last uh, reviews I have at least listed for uh, scheduling. And that will be episode number 203. It is the uh, an album from... Uh, it seems to be a one-man band artist, but it's Cave Blind, and the album is titled Cry of the Dying. Again, a very newer release, too. That will be for Friday, uh, February 19th. So that's uh, what's being scheduled here. So uh, very cool. That is what's going to be scheduled for these next uh, several weeks here. So, um, I, I know I try, uh, not everything's perfect with me trying to announce a lot of this stuff, but again, I'm just looking on my phone on what I've got scheduled on for those, for those days. So that's what's being scheduled. So uh, I hope, uh, you're all paid attention to a lot of that. I hope you all did. So there you go. All right. So finally I got all the content scheduling all the way. Uh, I guess it's time to get into what I was alluding to. Again, everyone expects for whenever a new year begins, especially after the shit year that was 2020. And again, we're all just hoping for that 2021 at least starts great. But nothing, nothing has to start the way that everyone wants it to start. There's always got to be something that just literally destroys it in a way and just sours it. And it's, of course, you know what I should be taught. You know, you know, uh, you should know what I'm at least referring to. It's, of course, what happened on January 6th, which was, again, even though you would think this right here would not be a topic for at least a metal music related podcast or at least a episode, you would think it wouldn't. Again, the whole Capitol Riot uh, shenanigans. Uh, or the, the, was it the storming the Capitol, whatever. But the reason it's why I'm bringing it up and why I'm talking about it is it actually has some sort of relation to uh, the world of metal. It's because of, if you've heard, not heard the news and you haven't seen the pictures... And he's already in custody at this point. And uh, uh, I mean, I can uh, still pull up some of the articles on the whole situation uh, situation right now surrounding him. But it's none other than Ice Earth's John Schaefer, who decided to fly out to fucking Washington, D.C. to participate in this, in, in, the, in the shenanigans that took place. I mean, I wasn't completely aware of the guy's uh, personal beliefs. Normally, I don't really give a shit what a musician's personal beliefs to begin with. I mean, of course, uh, 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 other than if your name isn't Ted Nugent, I don't really care much what your personal beliefs are in, whether it be religion or politics or what what you're, uh, again, in t anything. I don't really care. I just care whether or not uh, about what what you're putting on record to begin with. But John Schaefer, I wasn't always aware of what his personal beliefs were. But ever since the the news broke on the day that it happened, and then just seeing his face being plastered everywhere, I'm just like, what the fuck? Why is John Schaefer all of a sudden in the news? And again, I didn't try to really, I didn't really care to really look into what was going on in the world of politics. I tried to put my my mind out of it as, as best as I could because, again, I don't care about it. It's not really what I want to at least be focused on. I care what's going on within the world of, let's say, wrestling. I want to care about what's going on in uh, movies, TV shows, music. You know, that's what my, what, what I cared, what I seem to really care about. All right, that th uh, those are my 
uh, personal um, interests are. But politics, I don't really give much of a shit about. But again, I may have a discussion with someone, again, whether it be with family or it be with friends. I can have at least some sort of a dis discussion, but at the same time, it's not what I at actively pursue on, on my personal time. And so... And sometimes I'll have thoughts on some of it. Sometimes I do. Again, if you've ever, if you haven't seen my personal Facebook page, uh, again being Ben Smith on uh, Facebook. Again, I do have some uh, personal opinions here and there. But still, I don't always try to do it every single day or every single week, all the time. Again, like uh, some of my other friends on Facebook who always have to uh, put out what their thoughts are on uh, certain matters. But so, I, I, again, I don't try to, but so when it comes to the world of John Schaefer, I wasn't completely aware of some of the stuff until he started to look into it, and then I was like, what the fuck? I just couldn't believe it. Again, I'm not, I haven't dived that much deep into Iced Earth, but it's been one of those bands I've been wanting to really get into for a long time, but sadly, with uh, what the acts that John Schaefer did. I mean, it's not like he did completely any... Uh, uh, now, this is probably going to be a very unpopular opinion. But the thing is, as much as it was a bad thing uh, of him just uh, participating in it, which in many ways, in its own right, kind of sours a little bit uh, of his reputation. And I think uh, Metal Sucks posted a little uh, article uh, saying how whether or not is this going to impact any of of uh, I Sturth's, uh if it's going to impact their uh, future, they the person who wrote that says it's probably not going to. I kind of have to disagree because already, if you haven't seen any of, of the responses towards John Schaefer's actions of just even just about by uh, default uh, participating in the Capitol riot. It actually has already done some damage to him. I mean, the, the, these people were gonna at least were going to look past his personal beliefs. I mean, uh, uh, the fact that uh, he appeared on an uh, an episode of Alex Jones many years ago, and some of his again, that's where I ended up looking into his opinions. And yeah, I w uh, even though again, it, it's. I've known about guys like Dave Mustaine. I've known about uh, Ted Nugent, and again, I've known that Dave Mustaine was uh, at one point was on uh, the Alex Jones show. Yet somehow, that still uh, hasn't done much to tarnish his fucking uh, reputation. So it, it, again, but at the same time, they didn't go out and fucking go and participate in the fucking Capitol riot. They didn't. He didn't fucking do that. They uh, then, uh, as crazy as Ted Nugent is, he didn't fucking fly out to to Washington D.C. to fucking storm in into the White House and just fucking destroy shit. He didn't. And even as as uh, sometimes how conspiracy theory written Dave Mustaine is, he still didn't fucking fly out uh, there again. He has more things to do with his life than that than uh, worry about what the fuck is going on inside the White House. Uh, again, uh, he uh, again anything to really get him riled up. So John Schaefer is the first one to do it. Some will say he had some big cojones doing it. Some will say it was just utterly fucking stupid. Well, I'm gonna be on that side and say he's utterly fucking stupid for doing that. And now uh, there's always a, it's up in the air. What's the future of Ice Earth? And same goes for Demon and, Demons and Wizards, his other band. Uh. You know, Century Media. Apparently, they they've been trying to the to con they people have been trying to contact them about what's the future with Ice Earth, uh, being signed to their label again on their site. Apparently, they've been removed from their site. However, they still haven't completely commented on it. So, are they this afraid of it, or are they just up in the? Uh, I won't say they are afraid. If anything, I would definitely think that they're just up in the air of what's going on. They're waiting for a definitive answer from the jury, uh, from the jurisdiction on uh, what's the situation with John Schaefer. Is he going to be sent to prison for all of this? Again, 
uh, he I think I think he he turned himself in on January seventeenth, and right now I think well, well who who is it uh, that's now uh, he's now in custody of? Uh, I know he he uh, said he at least he did turn himself in to the authorities. I think was it to, to again uh, it was it the FBI or some of them, but he did turn himself in on January seventeenth, and now he's in uh, custody of U.S. Marshals. He's now in custody of the U.S. Marshals. So, right now, I think he's only being held, I think, until they're able to, to at least book a court hearing. Even though, again, they got him on six charges. One of them apparently uh, uh, bear spraying a police officer, I think. Which, uh, I think, I don't know, that uh, they're saying he could have. That that's apparently what they've got him on six charges in. I don't, uh, but it's never been completely. It seems like every time I read some of these articles on saying uh, on at least uh, that 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 bring up the charges, they don't seem to really be clarifying on whether or not he really did or not. They're just saying, well, this is at least the charges he's got, but it's not clarified. If he personally did use bear spray on a police officer, or he's just not just being, you know, uh, being listed in with within uh, members who did fucking uh, bear spray police officers. So who knows if he was one of those that participated? But just because he participated, I guess it does get added into to the charges on on his part. So really, I think that's what Central Media is on. Is like they're just up in the air on what's the situation with him. Is he going to be sent to prison, or is he not going to be? Is he what? What will be the charges put on him? What are they going to sentence him for? Is it going to be for prison, or are they going to be, or is he going to be doing community service, or is he going to be a uh, house arrest? What's the uh, what's the the situation for him? So, I think all of it is up in the air, but still, it's just completely ridiculous, alright? It's just absolutely ridiculous with uh, John Schaefer. Again, uh, I'm just completely, I was, uh, at, at, at the same time, I thought it was funny. It's funny that uh, he fucking did it. You know, it, it, it just seemed to have come out of a left field with what he fucking did. It was just out of left field. You didn't think that a guy like John Schaefer, who at times, yes, his political beliefs are fucking ridiculous. But you wouldn't think he'd be going out there and actually fucking do it. And one other thing, uh, they seem to be connecting him to a right-wing uh, terrorist group. Or at least they're calling him a terrorist group, uh, the Oath Keepers. They seem to be tying him to that group too. So that that's another kind of crazy... Um, uh, there, that, that's that's another crazy uh, uh, discovery, and that's another one. Uh, the fact that now that that really puts it up in the air whether or not if he's going to be charged for that too, because again they're deeming the Oath Keepers as a terrorist group, or 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 they're saying a right wing terrorist group. That's actually true. Oh boy, that that that. that I would say is enough to also that could possibly send him to prison too because of again, uh, it, it, it's it's some it's really something that I think is pretty bad to have on somebody's reputation. So that that's definitely something. Uh, and, and of course now the question is, since I already kind of mentioned that I've been wanting to pursue in uh, at least in checking out Iced Earth. Now people are kind of questioning, are you going to now after what just happened? Ooh. And of course, Storm Rider. Um, Storm Rider does have a uh, Iced Earth album cover as uh, the uh, uh, as the profile picture. So, which is, it was the album again, titled Night of the Storm Rider. Uh, so, uh, this is obviously for for those who are just huge fans of Iced Earth. That's why I think that the article that Metal Sucks posted, uh, them uh, putting up in the uh, them putting up in the air whether or not if this is going to affect uh, how people react to Iced Earth now. Is it going to sour their reputation? Are anybody going to keep up with this band after what just happened? Some are saying it's not going to affect their reputation. But I have to say, I I think it is going to. 
they put it up, of course, they put up an, uh, as a theory on whether or not if, if, he, if John Schaefer doesn't get sent to prison and instead is only sent to do community service instead or what not what uh, what's the uh the re, uh what's the re, the re repercussions for uh John Schaefer is he going to apologize they say that the metal sucks or at least the person who wrote that article for metal sucks or apparently saying that the only thing he can get off the hook of is if he apologizes for this and apologizes to the, to the fan base for participating whether or not saying that if that's going to uh, the solve uh, all the problems and it's going to make everyone feel happy. I don't think so. I think if anything, it's going to be a long rebuilding process for at least for anybody to at least feel at least more comfortable on uh, supporting Iced Earth and uh, John Schaefer. At least John Schaefer. Because again, uh, none of the other members participated in the uh, the shenanigans that went on at uh, January 6th at uh, Capitol Hill. Uh, none of the other members, so I don't think I, I think it'd be a little bit uh, dickish to actually also hold the other members accountable. I mean, so what? One me member who fucking goes out and does that is what? It's going to ruin the other members? I think that uh, that's a bit of a, a sourpuss thing to do. All right, that's a little bit of a sourpuss thing to pull. Again, uh, to punish the other members for being associated with, uh, with one fucking guy. It's one thing if John Schaefer is all of a sudden being associated with with, with a terrorist group, but now all of a sudden the members who are being associated with John Schaefer, that makes them fucking terrorists? Uh, but of course, there's probably going to be some people that are going to come into the comment section here and that is going to say, well, so you think it's all right to uh, consider John Schaefer a terrorist because he's associated with the Oath Keepers, but you don't think it's all right uh, to to consider the members of I Earth to be a uh, terrorist because they're associated with uh, John Schaefer or be considered right-wing uh, um, apologists. Listen, you know, some of this it almost feels like it's a double-edged sword, but to be quite honest... Uh, I don't know if John Schaefer really is considered much of a terrorist because of he's associated with Oath Keepers, but I don't. But at the same time, he did participate in the whole shenanigans that happened at, at uh, Capitol Hill, which in some cases almost makes him a bit of terrorists because of what they fucking did. So that at their kind of still, still, it it, it still goes that way. Whereas the the members of Iced Earth, they didn't do anything. Yeah, they were they uh, played with uh, with the guy. They were a part of his fucking band, but at the same time, they didn't go on and do that. And I don't know if some of the members share the same personal beliefs, but they sure do not condone the actions of what he did. So I think it's still wrong to punish the other members of Iced Earth just because of uh, being associated with John Schaefer. So I think you can kind of get the idea. You get the idea. It's not a good look. It's a terrible look. So, but we'll see on what happens to John Schaefer and what the verdict is and what's the re the repercussions. Is he going to be sent to prison or is he going to be doing community service? What is he going to do? And what is going to be his response after years uh, of him looking back on this? Is he going to be proud of this or is he going to be uh, a little bit... Um, unhappy with, uh, with this and he's going to feel sorry for actually participating is he going to say he was in a bit bit of a bad mind space at the time that uh, when he participated in this like he again depression could it be again uh just alcoholism could it be what what's going to be his i i wouldn't say excuse but what's what but what's going to be his um his answer to all of this so we'll, we'll see right now again it, it, it's absolutely ridiculous so i already talked about some of this it's gone on for quite a bit so let's definitely move on and go on to something else let's get into the let's get into some q a uh answers here let's get into the q a here all right so again uh pretty much stated uh storm Rider sent me uh some questions for me to answer on this episode of the Nasty Metal Podcast. So here's the Q&A segment. Again, this comes from Storm Rider on January 11th. So, uh, here is uh, what Storm Rider um, 
uh, question me. So, what's on this week's, again, uh, ask me uh, here on what's on this week's schedule. Uh, my three questions for a Q&A for the upcoming podcast. One, how did you become such a big wrestling fan since I talk about quite a bit of wrestling here on my podcast anyway? So, uh, did slash do you uh, wrestle yourself and who are your favorite wrestlers? Two, what is your favorite genre in metal music? Three, what are the albums you most uh, look forward to? That's it. I hope you like them. Take care and stay safe. So thank you, Storm Rider. Thank you for uh, sending in this qu these questions in. Uh, to answer the first question, which was on whether or not uh, do I even wrestle. No, I do not. I've never participated in that. Uh, so uh, at that that's really uh, my, uh, my, my answer to that one. On how I even became a wrestling fan. How did I? Well, it's the easiest one to say. All happened in 1998. I was young, and one of the biggest things to happen uh, to in wrestling at that point in 1998 uh, was, and it happened all in Fresno. It was uh, on the day uh, Raw, or at least WWF, Raw's War was booked to uh, at the Cell Arena, uh, the Cell Arena. In uh, Fresno, California, and it would be the uh, the famous episode where Stone Cold Steve Austin um, flipped off Mike Tyson because he showed up at uh, the uh, Royal Rumble, uh, which would just happen a night, just the night before. Again, Vince McMahon uh, goes on and announces Mike Tyson again. He's going to participate at WrestleMania 14 which was going to be at least in March of that year. And he comes out, got all of his people with him, all the ones who's associated with Mike Tyson, comes out there, he's about to answer. Before he gets anything in, here comes Stone Cold Steve Austin, who just won the Royal Rumble for the second time. Uh, and he goes out there, and uh, again, he... The, the thing he took offense to was that he's, again, Vince McMahon calling Mike Tyson the toughest uh, SOB or the most dangerous man or so in sports. And so he basically took offense at Santa. So you're uh, considered the most toughest SLB. But right now you're in the the presence of the toughest son of a bitch here in wrestling. And then uh, goes on to say, so I see you know a bit of this little sign language. And flips him off. And then all of a sudden just becomes the hugest fucking pull apart. And again, right in front of this Fresno crowd in uh, there. And... They're just pulling him up, and again, uh, Vince is just fucking uh, being mad, just fucking yelling at him, and like, you just fucking ruined this whole thing, and it just created one of the biggest moments, and the thing is, it made not just news all around the world, but it made news also on local Fresno TV, and I was very little. I barely could remember it, but again, my brother and my father just, they watched that whole thing on local news and from there on they uh, wanted to participate in watching some of the shows and then that's when my brother also became a uh, uh, years later or at least no I know months later uh, and again this is where it comes to also video games is uh, I can't remember the fucking video game shop God damn, there were plenty I think it could have been a uh, Walmart or somewhere but I forgot where we went to was it a uh, blockbuster or could have been a um, Hollywood game I forgot where we went to to get it but it was uh, the new uh, WWF uh, video game which was Warzone and the thing that just caught me is again Luke who's on, on the cover who look who's on the fucking uh, booklet cover for the video game it's Stone Cold Steve Austin and, I, and again one of the most famous shots of just him on the turnbuckle and just with his fists raised up to get the, the again the crowd to for for the camera shot and so on because he always would do that go every four corners to go up so he can give everybody a good camera shot and uh, bob his head and say whatever kind of shit he wanted to say but again it's just that and again one of the things I and, and it, the video game was also the, the really beginning of where I uh, ended up becoming fascinated with the world of professional wrestling and especially with the WWF at that point 
So, and I mean, I was also aware of World Championship Wrestling, again, WCW, again, uh, knowing about Hulk Hogan, Sting, and Macho Man in there, who at least went there. Some of them were once with the WWF, but at that point, uh, they went over there, and again, uh, the popularity. So, this was uh, the late 90s, to a lot of people, uh, younger fans, especially around my age, pretty much uh, considered one of the last great times for wrestling because of it was so popular again at that point. Both companies had some of the biggest uh, wrestlers in the world, and again, we're just getting a lot of uh, just, just a lot of coverage, and we're just being seen on TV. They were getting again the merchandise. You go to stores like either Walmart or so on. And they'll just have all like either action figures, some of these wrestlers, and then of course uh, all the dolls and so on. They just, every just, uh, from, from both companies, WWF and WCW. So there was just, uh, just everywhere. You could tell it was another big uh, era for at least wrestling at that point. It was mainstream, but it was just everywhere. So the thing is with that video game and getting that and then just playing it and I one of the cool things about it was also the promos. They would do uh they would have the all the the wrestlers uh cut uh promos specifically just for the game for every time uh for if, if you're doing story mode or so on they'll just cut and some of them were cheesy but the thing that always just stood out again guys like for me uh Farouk aka Ron Simmons and uh Kane uh Goldust and then, of course, Stone Cold Steve Austin. So those are, it, it, in many ways, and again, of course, the Mick Foley, Mankind, uh, same guy. Uh, just those were the ones that stood out. I mean, that was also the final video game uh, for Bret Hart, who at, at that point had just went over to a WCW. And uh, now, uh, of course, uh, after the, the Montreal Screwjob, which uh, many are still saying whether or not if that was a legitimate uh, uh, thing... Or it was a work shoot, basically meaning if it was a worked uh, segment, did they uh, was it uh, just a way to just get him off TV so he can fulfill his new contract with uh, WCW? So it, it, many people, again, it's all gone on that uh, guys like him, Bret Hart or Jim Cornette, whoever you talk to, have said no, it legitimately was real. There, there was uh, the only way that they could get uh, Bret Hart to lose the title if they really just uh, f basically fuck him over because of they didn't want uh, want to have him keep the belt and just go over to a different company with it. So uh, some of it does sound, I guess, it does sound almost worked. But at the same time, uh, there's a good again Dark Side of the Ring episode. There's a good episode on it that goes into it, again from uh, the interviews from. Uh, uh, either Jim Cornette and Vince Russo and the uh, Earl Hebner, the referee in that match, they all gone on and uh, they they give out their sides of the whole situation. And uh, again, at that times, really almost at times, very it's very legitimate of what happened with there. But without that, we we wouldn't have gotten the whole stuff with Austin McMahon and all of that, which just really made 1998 one of the Biggest years uh, for uh, wrestling. So again, that's again one of the that was when I became a wrestling fan, and so from there on, I just was so um, so fascinated with a lot of it. And then the year later in ninety ninety nine or two thousand, um, when I uh, th th apparently it goes into when it comes to movies, uh, Jaws. Well, I uh, was so fascinated with sharks that. Uh, my mom was telling me about this movie called Jaws, and so we went to Blockbuster, we bought it. But uh, when we put the DVD in, there's a preview for, a th oh god, I forgot the name of the film, but it's one of the most famous uh, films for wrestling, and it was uh, being, it was all, basically a documentary on the the WWF, especially at that point, and one of the most fans, again, all recorded during the time of the height, again, Austin, Rock, and... Kane and those things, and the thing is, they're showing footage of fucking Mick Foley and the famous uh, sh uh, shot of just him getting thrown off the cell at King of the Ring '98. Uh, again, from Undertaker, he's just falling flat onto the fucking cell, and then uh, even showing some stuff from the uh, the I Quit match between Rock and Man and Mick Foley 
I always say mankind, but again, it's the same fucking guy. But they're just showing the headshots of just, again, just Rock hitting Mick Foley with the chair. My God, 17 fucking times. And the thing is, those were legitimate chair shots. They weren't fake. Those were goddamn legitimate chair shots. And Mick Foley literally bled for for real on fucking uh, pay-per-view. And uh, goddamn, and they're showing footage of him in the back of just getting stitched up. And the thing is, some of those footage I saw, I'm like, oh my good lord. And of course, there's the famous uh, interview uh, bit uh, on uh, uh, between Vince McMahon and uh, Draws, uh, which is an, it's a, this ain't part of, that wasn't part of the story. This is actually a legitimate uh, um, interview or for a contract signing with, uh, with the company. And the thing is, the what got uh, Vince McMahon interested with draws was because he was known for uh, how to puke on on uh, on time. Apparently, he uh, apparently it's it's a it's just, uh, people and their fucking tricks with so on. But the thing is, he heard about it and he's like, he wanted to see for real. Can you actually legitimately puke for real uh, without uh, getting sick? And he does it, and then the famous he's gonna puke. He's gonna puke. And again, I just saw this, and I'm just like, what the fuck? But the thing is, it didn't turn me away. It just made me more and more fascinated with what's going on. And then finally, watching some of the episodes. Finally, again, uh, UPN with SmackDown. I'm just watching this. And one of my one of my other memories of just watching wrestling as a kid. And again, uh, me and my brother were supposed to go to bed or so, but the thing is, we uh, turn on the TV, it's late, and again, SmackDown's on. It's on UPN, it's like uh, late 2001. And one of the things I remember from this episode, is like, it's like, it's towards around this time, again, of 2001, and it's a... Uh, Oh boy, I, I I vividly remember it just being a ladder match. And of course, so years later, many years later, I would uh, would go and rewatch this match. But it's between Jeff Hardy and Rob Van Dam. But the, one of the things I remember is uh, Rob Van Dam doing the fucking splash uh, or the off from, from the ladder onto the onto Jeff Hardy. And I just I'm just watching all this, and it's like this to me is some fucking cool shit. I liked what I was seeing. And so from there on, from 2001 to 2002, I'm just now watching most of, uh, again, SmackDown. And then finally when we get cable, and I'm out, now, now I'm able to watch Raw on TNN. And uh, goddamn, the memories I've got of just watching some of those. Whether or not the product was great at that moment, it, it mattered to me. What I just liked is I'm watching some wrestling and so on. Of course, but then by that point, mom and dad, uh, the product was becoming so uh, so far edgy at times that, uh, I mean, this is past Attitude Era, okay? This is past 1998, 99, and 2000, where it was edgy, but at the same time, you had some of the biggest names at that point. Uh, right now, the only big names you've got on Raw um, uh, for WWE now... Uh, I remember the first day when they changed their name because I was so used to the word WWF. I was just so used to it. But now they're changed change the name because apparently they lost a lawsuit with the, what is it, the, the World Wildlife Fund or so on. Was it the World Wildlife uh, Foundation? The Panda Company. They lost the, the lawsuit to that because apparently they all got mad that how many times uh, they would say the name WWF on their TV. When obviously they didn't know about anything about the wrestling business to begin with. So they they completely just uh, would get mad at it. And they, they just prefer it if, you, if uh, they would just say World Wrestling Federation instead of just shorting up and just say WWF. It was stupid. Still though, they lost the whole lawsuit and they had to just come up with WWE. And so it basically just puts out there, yeah, we're entertainment, world wrestling entertainment. So that definitely wasn't very popular with its fan base. In some ways, many say it killed even more of the fan base. Still, I didn't give a shit. I was just watching it, and again, but the thing is, at that point, like I was pointing out also, is apparently it just got so edgier, and uh, some stuff just got so stupid that, uh, well... I'm now barred from uh, watching any of it anymore. <laughs> so it took a few more. It took 
uh, longer for me to really get back into it because there was so such a long period where I was so done with watching wrestling that I didn't give give a shit. I mean, I would play some of the video games that would come out, but I was just so done with it. And but 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 by 2011 is why I became fascinated with watching it again. And again, at this point. Austin's retired. He's already, I mean, he's been retired since 2003. Rock is off doing movies. Uh, Triple H is already starting to kind of, um, he, he, he's becoming more of a part timer now. Undertaker's now becoming more of a part timer. Uh, Kane, I think, is uh, still doing stuff. He's probably one of the, oh, again, one of the ones that's close, that was still a good connection back to, to the, uh, the time period of 97, 98, and so on. Again, one of the veterans. He's become, again, one of the few that's still wrestling. Big Show, originally the Giant and WCW. They're still there. And, but again, most of the, uh, the bigger, I mean, Randy Orton, John Cena, and the, the only two of, uh, the Ruthless Aggression era. It always gets to. Many people really like to refer and like to use names for eras because of it, it bring it, it makes them remind uh more so remind or remember better of the years and so on instead of just going by 80s 90s and so on because again things change so many times so that's why they always prefer to go to just name things name era or years from like let's say again uh nine like four years of that as an era and they like to give them a name um, so the ruthless aggression era, it got called, and that was like what 2002 to um, some of that have said eight, but I think it, by the time of 2006, I think is when it uh, completely how it lasted because from 2007 to eight, it was becoming a little bit different, and things were going in di different directions. Again, I'm not familiar with most of that, I mean. Goddamn, one of the things that also kind of killed wrestling was the death of Chris Benoit and that uh, and the whole situation surrounding that. And it's just that also ruined my uh, at least my uh, at least just my fan fandom. I wouldn't say fandom, but just my uh, likeness for him. So I was no longer a Chris Benoit fan. So that just it killed all of that. Not because he died. It's just what happened. Again, there's a Dark Side of the Ring episode on Chris Benoit. So, I don't have to talk too much about that. But, again, I just was so out of it. But by 2011, my sister gets into it. Into it and, again, apparently it starts with uh, Dusty Rhodes' uh, youngest kid, Cody Rhodes. Me, I mean, I was, uh, uh, again, uh, the only other son I knew of uh, at the time of Dusty was Gold Dust, aka Dustin Rhodes, who I've been a fan of for years. I was, I'm, I'm still am. Uh, his stuff in AEW is just reminded me that how much of an underrated worker uh, Dustin Rhodes is. Great fucking promo, great in ring. Uh, he deserved a lot more better uh, as a uh, as a performer. He deserved much more better. He should have been a main event guy. That's how I feel. Still, though, I digress. Uh, again, she got fascinated with watching SmackDown and Raw. But, so, I kind of tried to pay pay attention to some of the stuff on Raw. Again, uh, one of the other guys, as far as newer wrestlers at that point, I was into CM Punk. I liked him. But, at times, I didn't know what the hell they were doing with him. I didn't like the new Nexus angle with him. I wish I saw the stuff at Nexus when the, uh, their uh, be, um, debut... I wish I saw that in 2010, but I didn't, and now when looking back, I feel like uh, the whole wrestling world was robbed for, for most of the 2010s because of how that got uh, screwed up. But, so I was into CM Punk. I finally was made a huge fan of his when he cut the famous, uh, what now is called the pipe bomb, which is just him cutting one of the, uh, at that point, for any professional wrestler, on any mainstream company, cutting one of the most scathing promos I had heard, and it just brought me back to when I was a kid again. Just seeing guys like Austin Rock and them just cut just some of the best fucking uh, shit on TV, and that I thought was great, and it great, and it was some of the best angles. It actually did, and it actually I think it made Punk even uh, probably the biggest baby faces. Even though he's uh, they're booking him as now as a tweener because again he's supposed to be a heel. But the thing is that promo 
everyone was so tired of almost the guys on, on the roster that what he cut was, again, it, some of it said it was heat, but he got one of the hugest fucking pops, and it just made him the biggest uh, guy right at then, then, and there. And, everyone, and uh, some may deny it, but I would still go on and say that Punk, after Austin, may be the second biggest wrestler to go out there and get huge, earth-shattering, glass-shattering uh, uh, pops. And that means from, from the audience. Pop means the whole entire audience is just cheering. It's so deafening. The loudness from, from, from the audience is just so deafening. That's what you call a earth or glass shattering uh, pop. And that's what Punk was getting. Every time he showed up, those were some loud ass pops. Nope, they were just cheering hell. Even when as a heel, people were still cheering for him. Because of, like, again, it's the same thing. When they tried to uh, turn, when they turned Austin heel again in 2001... Uh, again, uh, the worst thing. Why? Why does the audience want to boo for their boo their hero? Why do they want to do that? It's stupid. So they didn't. So for, for for the so when Punk was then turned heel in 2012, uh, it, it's like why the hell does this audience want to boo its hero? He was pretty much a uh, again. It, I mean, you can say when I look back at that, it made sense because again. Uh, all the guys that are putting over him, he's, he's now being booked as the champion, and instead they're giving other guys now uh, stuff. So, uh, But the thing is, it's uh, now the beginning of me getting irritated now. Even though I'm supposed to like some of the stuff I'm seeing on TV, like how I was as a kid, now I'm getting irritated with this, a lot of this. So, I still am. But I'm a fan, I'm a wrestling fan now of the smaller companies. I like MLW, I like uh, Ring of Honor, uh, again, uh, ROH. And now uh, the the resurrection of the NWA and then uh, AEW, uh, and I do watch Impact here and there. I didn't really watch a lot of it when it was TNA here and there. I did, but I thought some of it was stupid. And I look back at it, I wish I watched the BSness of it because of at least I actually would have had some fun with some of that. Uh, but there's some stuff here that's ridiculous that goes on TV that I can have at least some fun with. But here and there, I'm just more of a fan of some of these smaller companies. Especially like, again, MLW, the most recent episode. Oh my god, I just, again, it just makes me uh, a kid again. I just like what, what's going on. So that's what I'm really, uh, again. But again, my beginning as a wrestling fan happened in 1998. And since then, uh, I'm... Again, I'm not going to give up being a wrestling fan, just like I'm not going to give up being a fan of metal music or hard rock music or so. I don't care how many people who are, uh, again, who feel they have to be fucking uh, so superior in their music taste because all oh, they like, uh, th th they like uh, Bach, they like Prague, they like Pink Floyd. And yes, I do, I do like some Pink Floyd, but there's some saying because it's, it's so adult. I don't care. I don't care. It's just, uh, I'm not going to change what I like. So, meaning I'm not going to change who I am. So, it, that's how everything is. So, again, my uh, fascination with wrestling began in 1998, and I'm still fascinated with some of it. But at the same time, there's some of it that's now irritating the hell out of me. And that's more so because of, I now, because we're in the social media world, everything that goes on behind the scenes... Now it gets unloaded on the fucking internet, and now I'm hearing all about it, and now I'm like, nah, I hate some of these fucking guys. So, it, it's all, it, it's just ridiculous. I wish there was still Mystique left in some of this. But with MLW, and some of these other companies, some of it is very harder now. Now I feel like it's almost kind of tough for me, since I don't, I don't, I try not to look at some of their Facebook or Twitter pages. I try not to, but the thing is, some of these guys, I think, do a better job on actually keeping things mystique, instead of just, uh, yeah, this is us, we're just playing this on TV. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, uh, even though you're getting a lot of money. So that, that, that's where I am at this point, that's where I am, so, uh. Definitely that, uh, hopefully that answers your first, uh, your question on uh, where, on how I became a wrestling fan. So thank you. And what is my favorite genre, besides, I guess, uh, besides metal? What's my, and music? To be quite honest, to say what, the, to, to, to put down a particular genre that I like, be quite honest, 
there really isn't very much, um, the, at least not one particular genre. Besides metal, uh, I think my other other biggest favorite uh, genre has to be hard rock, or at least heavy rock. I like uh, especially like the 70s and uh, 80s material stuff. I like. So that's probably my second favorite uh, genre, at least the rock genre besides metal. Uh, I'm not a big, I mean, I do, I do like some prog rock, I do like some of it, there's definitely some artists I do dig, um, I'm, I'm not a big jazz fan, but I do, but I do kind of flirt with some of it here and there, there's a the few artists I don't mind, but I don't particularly, uh, um, seek out for that kind of stuff, punk, um, I do like quite a bit of punk bands, but I don't, like I say, if I can classify myself as a punk fan, but I do like some of it, so definitely, uh, it's, it's there, but that really answer your question, uh, hard rock, that's definitely my, uh, my absolute, uh, favorite genre besides metal, so there, there you go, there's that answer to that question, and your third question, what are the two albums that I'm looking forward to? Well, since I've already point, pointed out about as far as new albums, since I'm uh, receiving a copy here real soon, uh, maybe at least by uh, sat by uh, by the time I, that I'm recording this, uh, the new Accept, I'm definitely uh, interested in that. I do. I'm looking forward to the covers down from Saxon. I'm uh, looking forward to all sorts of some of that stuff. But those are the only two that I'm really been looking forward to. Uh, trying to think of anything else. I can't really think of much. Uh, the new Alice Cooper, I'm on the fence of. I've said that in my last Nasty Metal podcast. I'm on the fence of that. So who knows? So again, really, the only two I'm really looking forward to is uh, the Accept and Saxon. So there you go. That answers that. And who knows, maybe whenever uh, Judas Priest uh, br- puts out their new album this year, if they do, since they are, have been working on it, same goes for Scorpions. I'm interested in what, what they're going to do. And I hope at one point, maybe Bullet uh, puts out a new album. So that's all I'm really looking forward to uh, as far as that. So there you go. That answers your question. So thank you. Thank you, Storm Rider, for sending in those questions. Uh, and I hope you got quite a bit of, uh, out, of the, out of this. I hope you did. So thank you very much. So, uh, before really, now I guess in many ways we're close to the end. Before I really end out, I do have to plug in my Bandcamp stuff. I have to. I've now changed uh, my the the downloading options for my stuff for like Winghead and Ex Morta. I've changed that. They're no longer free downloads. You have to pay for some of them now. And uh, I'll try and run you through some of that. Again, uh, the pricing for most of the full-length albums at least, or at least thirteen ninety five for the full length albums on my uh, pages for like an Exmoor and Winghead, and uh, but for like a EPs or demos, they're at least like five bucks. But for any of those who want to purchase the songs themselves, they'll buy. I think I uh, was it three bucks. I think uh, you'll get from them. But if you were to, at least for an Exmorta, if you wanted to buy them digitally, you'll there's an option to buy them f- uh, again uh, as a as a pack. And that will at least cost you, let me go to my Facebook page, because I actually listed uh, my, um, that, because right now, now I can't think of uh, the pricing uh, for uh, that now. Let me try and get all of that. <clears throat> uh, which is, all this happened all back in at least December is when I did all of this. Uh, when I uh, changed the, the, Buying options on, uh, so here we go, here we go, for, uh, X Morta here, so here, I, I pretty much listed it, so here it is, the pricing for right now on, uh, for, for X Morta, for, for the full Allen package, is listed at least at 48 bucks and, uh, 75, however, you'll get at least 35% off on the purchase, so it'll at least cost less than uh, forty-eight dollars and seventy-five cents. So that's the pricing for the full albums. If you were to buy them all at once for everything uh, on uh, the Bandcamp page for Ex Morta, but again, you'll get thirty-five percent off. So it'll be way cheaper than than uh, forty-eight. So it's definitely great. So I hope all of you at least supports those two pages. I really, uh, I do definitely do need some sort of support in that. Uh, in that um vicin in that uh category there I do need uh I now now I'm uh, starting to lose words so that's why I think I should be ending this podcast episode now. 
I hope all of you enjoyed. Uh, again, this was a very uh, long-witted uh, Nasty Metal podcast, but it's a fun one. Probably the most wrestling-centered one I've had, but again, it's all... Again, it gives you a good idea of what... Uh, how I kind of, what, uh, Some of my personal interests is, especially when growing up. So it gives you a good idea of what I've been doing, uh, what I've uh, done as a kid, and so on. So it gives you at least a good idea into my... Uh, into my personal life in some ways, I guess you can say. But again, it's a personal interest of mine, so I'm, I hope all of you enjoyed me talking about that. So with that, I hope all of you enjoyed again. Uh, I'll be back here with another Ask Me No Podcast episode at least in February. So with that, I hope all of you have a good February. I hope all of you have at least a good uh, thing, uh, Valentine's Day. So with that, this is for the Thresher Sam out. I'll see you all later. Take care, everyone. And I hope all of you have had a great uh, New Year's day and so on. Take care.